What's up, everybody? Welcome. This is the episode, the first episode of Revisited. Like we are, we are changing. Things are moving. This is our first uh, Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit Revisited. So, welcome. Lord of the Rings universe or Lord of the Rings uh, Of course, as usual, I'm joined by my two lovely co-hosts, Eric. Yes, Eric and Nate. <laughs> <laughs> just had to see where i am in each video uh it's confusing but um yeah let, let's let's just uh let's get the show on the road it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun adventure for uh, maybe an unexpected journey for all of us <laughs> uh. whack. i'm going on an adventure <laughs> whack <laughs> eric what movie are we revisiting today today on the lord of the rings revisited is the Hobbit an unexpected journey? <laughs> nice. I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad it cut out. I like, know, right? All but at the beginning the of your shout. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, yes. It, it wouldn't be my mic. Right? Yeah, yeah. The uh, Hobbit. Like... The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey, of course. Uh, it was written by Fran Walsh, Philippia Bowens. Peter Jackson, and uh, surprisingly to me, Guillermo del, del Toro as well. Yeah, I he know, helped I on the screenplay. Too. Yeah, but really, it was written by J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien. Sure. Yes, an adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien. 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 <laughs> Tolkien. Uh, uh, released in the U.S. fourteen fourteenth uh, of December two thousand twelve, with a budget of three hundred and fifteen million. And box office of one billion dollars, and of course, directed by a uh, fine gentleman named Peter Jackson, who we will get to know very well. Yeah. Never heard of him. <laughs> the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's he's he, like uh, Kevin one Feige. One key to stand for... above the rest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, well. It is interesting going back to these movies. It's been a while since it's I've great, seen it. It's great, dude. It's great. So, Eric, start us off. How many times have you seen The Hobbit on an unexpected journey? Did anything change rewatching it? Well, the Hobbit, out of The Hobbit movies, I can say that I've seen this one the most. Okay. Uh, and it's easy to say why. I feel like it's the best out of the three, in my opinion. We'll find out. Uh, um, me and my wife love the uh, the part with the dwarves and the the singing and the, and the dishwashing. Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins hates. Yes, we love that. Um, Throwing the plates. Per personally, myself, um, when the dwarves all start singing together is pretty rad. Um, I think I've seen this movie. I actually saw this movie this, when my daughter was a baby. We brought her to this movie, oh, so wow. this was her first. This was her first in theater movie. Um, she doesn't I think, remember. I remember no. I was there. Um, I think I've seen this five times. I think this is would be my fifth time watching it. Oh wow, sweet. So, and uh, yeah, I still enjoy it. There are parts that lag a little bit for me. Like I feel oh, like a lot. Yeah, but I mean, I'm so immersed in like the lore and everything i i just kind of get past the it the universe because it is yeah. a great universe I, I, so yeah i same thoughts as when i first watched it but yeah five times nice nate how many times have you seen it do you think change you're watching i think we're like at two and a half times mm. uh, I think oh that made me fell asleep yeah. one no i i don't think it was that i think because i watched it in theaters and then i th at some point I must have watched some other part of it because I remember a good chunk of this film, but there's no way that I just randomly sat through three hours of the Hobbit. <laughs> so and, until this time, and I did not fall asleep because it is a, it is a good film. Uh, but yeah, I think we're sitting at like two and a half times. Cool. Gotta love those. Yeah. I gotta love those halves. Yeah. Uh, Very unexpected halves. <laughs> an unexpected half uh for me i am at a solid two as well i saw it in theaters and i saw it now yeah the hobbit just like i think what happened was just i was like waiting 
until all of them came out to like rewatch it. And then after they were all done, it kind of like, I remember it like kind of like just leaving a slightly bad taste. In my It's no game of Thrones, but you know, it like le- left a bad taste in my mouth. And I was just like, eh, I'll just go watch Lord of the Rings. You know, if I, if I have any, yeah. any inkling to revisit this world, I always go to Lord of the Rings, never to this. So, uh, but it was, it was interesting. There's a lot that happened that I forgot, but there was also a lot that I was like, this does not need to be in here. So much, bro. So yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Um, Yay! There is a lot good. Um, it's still that Lord of the Rings vibe. Um, the one thing is like it's definitely I'd say like over polished, over CG compared to the originals, compared to the Lord, Lord of the Rings, because those are just like the perfect you know the perfect mix of fantasy and like rusticness and it just looks right like it looks perfect everything looks like it exists in that universe it looks real and then a lot of the stuff in this because so much of it is cg um it looks too manicured like even the dwarves like some of the dwarves just don't they look too too much like a cartoon character almost um so that takes away from it and yeah like this is one book the hobbit an unexpected journey and they turn it into three movies and this first film is three hours long. Yeah. And it yeah. is like the first third, maybe, yeah, the first third of the book. And they add some stuff that isn't really in the books. And then, yeah, they just really stretch out every single scene for like no reason. Yeah. Do we um, do we all agree that we feel like this movie should have been two movies instead of three? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm with, I'm with you on two. Um, yeah. Yeah, because there's a huge, huge ending section, and I can totally see everything surrounding that being one film, but that yeah. everything else before that could be its own film. But but yeah, like when they're getting chased by the orcs and the wargs right before they get to Rivendell, it feels like it's like 15, 20 minutes of just them running in hills from rock to rock to rock to rock. And it's like, bro, like it's you could have given us two minutes of that yep. and it's enough. Um, and then there's, you know, that whole scene, which please put in the comments if I'm wrong, when they're watching the mountains fight each other, I'm pretty sure in the books, it's just like a crazy storm and there's no giant rocks fighting at all. And it's just like a crazy storm that they just have to get inside the safety. So I don't know why they added that. You could have chopped that out. Um, and there's so many also, scenes like that. Anyways. Yeah. You know, and it's pointless too, you know, like you didn't have to do that for them to go into the cave. Like, when in the, in the Fellowship of the Ring, like, it's just a really bad blizzard. I guess Saruman d- does do some kind of sh- shady stuff, which is why they turn back. But, like, you could have just had to be a bad storm. And, like, yeah, let's get in the cave and avoid the storm. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so many scenes, so many scenes like that, you know, where it's like, man, do we really need to, like, really dive deep into every single instance? So that's a, that's a little a little bit... <laughs> It takes away like this film easily could have been like, I feel like an hour and a half. Yeah. And even like right at the beginning, like they're stretching everything out and then it's like, oh, uh, you know, um, freaking uh, Frodo comes back and is like, you know, doing his thing and everything. And I'm like, I feel like they just put him in to be like, hey, just so I'm you okay know, you remember that. Lord of the Rings, the good ones? I'm okay. With yeah. That. There's, then there's this, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah no. I yeah. Think- I- Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. I, yeah, I don't have a problem with that either because it kind of, it, it kind of, together. yeah, it does. Like, if you wanted to watch all six movies, you're like, oh, he, like, right before the party is when he's yeah. reminiscing and all that. So, and yeah. writing his book. Yeah, it's literally yeah. like Frodo goes out and he goes out to read that book and then meets Gandalf coming into the Shire. It's like literally connected. Like, like connected just like that um, another scene is like radagast um in the books he's kind of i mean he's an important part but he's not as annoying to me and this one he's like i don't know why i just don't like this guy i think it's because gandalf makes him looks so bad that radagast just kind of looks like a loser that needs to get his life together when gandalf is so cool but like even that like they give us this whole scene with radagast saving this this porcupine or this hedgehog and it's like how about instead of all that why don't we just cut to Radagast on the rabbits, just like trying to find w- what what the evil is, you know? Like we get everything we need from that scene 
just from that. Introducing Lord of the Rings facts or Middle Earth facts. We decided on Middle, Middle no, Earth facts. That's terrible. It's magical facts. Oh, <laughs> that's like not it. <laughs> that's great, dude. Magical facts. Magical that's facts. Good. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it. Magical facts. Eric. Magical fact. <laughs> Frodo, Saruman, Galadriel, and uh, spoilers, Legolas are all returning characters from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, although none of them appear in the book The Hobbit. Yeah. This is the same for Radagast, who is only mentioned in The Hobbit in the Hobbit, really? but does not oh. appear until the Lord of the Rings. Conversely, however, Radagast was omitted from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I, I totally misremembered that. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, it's it's very accurate. And another quick one about uh, Radagast. Uh, they asked how many wizards there are. Gandalf says there are five, naming Saruman, Radagast, and himself, then saying he can't remember the names of the other two, merely saying the two blues. Their names... Uh, Alatar and Payando appear in the book Unfinished Tales, a collection of J.R.R. Tolkien uh, ideas and half manuscripts edited into books from his son, Christopher Tolkien. Uh, the filmmakers didn't have the rights to use materials from that movie, so the two blue wizards remained unnamed in this movie. Yeah, they went to the east, past Mordor, to where the Easterlings come from. Oh, interesting. Well, they're on vacation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like implied that they were like kind of corrupted by Saruman because Saruman basically runs the East. So if, right. if if the East is ran by Sauron, not Saruman, Sauron, then it means that the Blue Wizards weren't doing a good job. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, good jobs being had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like in the book, you know, the whole White Council thing with Galadriel and Saruman, like... It's just like mentioned where it's like Gandalf leaves to go deal with yep. that and they don't talk about it at all. All they say is that is that he just leaves to go deal with it. And again, it's like, why did we need this whole African scene? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I think it's I, just I, to tie it, you know, because the, the necromancer is Sauron. So it is connected. But they wanted to really drive home. They're like, it's Sauron. Look, look, it's Sauron. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was telling Winnie it makes me hate saruman even more because like his bsing everybody like oh what's man, funny I'm really going I think, I think he's still good I like think so purely too. good at this no, point yeah there's no way he's isn't, still good isn't there he, that scene in the later like in the third hobbit movie or something like that where him and uh gandalf or maybe he just goes alone he goes to uh don't know what is the place called Dol -Guldur. Dol -Guldur. doesn't he go there and yeah. then that's when so he gandalf, gets corrupted we'll, we'll we'll get to it but yeah Winston's basically right. He because he's how can he be so aloof? <laughs> he's just like, no, it's cool. Dude, honestly, worry, it's, man. it's pretty common. Um, because like what what happens is like they think that Sauron is straight up dead, dead. Because yeah. you know, at the beginning of the third age, like he gets the ring cut off of him and then he like dissipates into nothingness. And then like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years go by. So they think he's not, that guy's like dead, dead. Like, don't worry about that guy. Mm -hmm. But in reality, he's not. He's just amassing his power. Yeah. Well, let's. let's... My, I'm, I'm sorry. My wife would like to point out that he's kind of like the emperor, biding his time. Sauron? The... Yes. Yeah, except it makes sense for Sauron. It makes <laughs> no sense for the emperor. True. And True. they laid the groundwork in the Lord of the yes. Rings universe. They that's did the, not do that in Star Wars. That's the big issue. <laughs> um, well, let's start the conversation with importance. Where do we rank The Hobbit in importance? A lot of these lists are going to be pretty easy because right now on the list, they're just number one. But let's still talk about why this movie yeah, is important. Yeah, I mean, well, I think what really, what really, really helps this is it's kind of thematically. I think this movie matters thematically because it really lays the foundation and the th the theme of the hobbits and why the hobbits are important and why they matter and why they're useful and what Gandalf sees in them. Um, and yeah, this film just does a great job. It also does a great job, you know, kind of explaining the theme of all, all these films is where it's like, Hey, we just want to live a peaceful life in the Shire smoking pipe weed. You know, that's, that's the end goal here. 
smoke weed every day. Exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it's like, um, and the film does a pretty good job with that. There's one thing that this film adds that is not in the book that I honestly think is a masterstroke from Peter Jackson or whoever did write it, where Galadriel is, is asking Gandalf, you know, why the halfling? Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, I don't know. I just know that he he gives me, what does he say exactly? Gives me he gives courage. me hope. He courage. gives me courage. Yeah. And like, yeah, like that is totally what Tolkien was going for, where it's like you don't need always, you know, the super great hero, you know, like... um. Thorin, you know, who's this awesome, awesome dwarf, or you don't need Gandalf, this super powerful wizard. You just need normal people doing the best they can, doing the right thing. Like heart, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that is what's going to defeat evil. And like, I just love that scene, bro, because it's great performance by Sir Ian McKellen, the one, the only, the legend. So great to see him in this film again. That's what I'm saying. Like, I I really like that they brought Frodo in um, because it's just good to see him. Good to see Elijah Wood as Frodo again because we're. Oh yeah, it is. At you know, at that point, we hadn't seen him for years, and we're mm-hmm. never going to see him again. So just any moment, just and he looks great. You know, yeah. look. I don't know if they de-aged him, but he looks just right. It's great, great to see OG Bilbo as well, who falls right into the role just like Bilbo. So it's it's awesome. Yep. I think I, I don't really have anything more to add about importance. Like, yeah. Well, we, we see Sting for the first time. We see the yeah, ring for the us, first time. We see Elrond. Elrond. Yeah, dude. And like, we see ring. all the characters on screen for the first time. Yeah, not all of them, just a, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, Everybody the, in the movie. <laughs> the ring, the ring showing up, you know, it's interesting because it shows up. But like, when you read The Hobbit, it's just a magical ring. Like, there's nothing else to know about it. Mm. It's just a magical ring that turns you invisible. Um, and they honestly did a good job with this film. Like they don't really connect at all. There's just one second, but even then, that isn't really a connection with the, between Sauron on the ring. But when Bilbo puts it in his pocket and freaking Gandalf sees it, uh, but even then, that doesn't that doesn't sell the point that like oh that's the one ring because like nobody knows about that. Um, so honestly, it's it's almost less like oh man, this film is more important as much as like dang dude, that's some good like. I don't know if it's like foreshadowing or just laying groundwork, you know? Yep, I had a totally had a um a magical Magic. fact about <laughs> that ring. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Magical fact. Magical fact. The Ooh. musical cue for the scene where Bilbo finds the One Ring is the same as the corresponding scene in the pro of uh, the prologue, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, by uh, by the odd way that the ring behaves when dropped, it seems far heavier than it ought to be, an effect made memorable in Lord of the Rings film, which was achieved using magnets. Although Gandalf notices how Bilbo slips the ring into his pocket and may even sense something sinister about it. He doesn't realize its true nature yet and is so immediate um, and so is not immediately alarmed. It was explained in the Fellowship of the Ring that apart from the One Ring, 19 other great rings were made for the elves, the dwarves, and men. Uh, Gandalf may have always assumed that Bilbo found one of the dwarven rings that have been unaccounted for. Uh, it's it is only after long research that Gan- Gandalf finally realizes that it's Sauron's one ring. And it yeah, would have totally that, made sense that it was one yeah. of the dwarven rings. And there's so much backstory that we'll go into um, in the Fellowship of the Ring. I'm fairly certain Gandalf has one of the elven rings. And Galadriel has one too. Yeah, she does. And Elrond has one. Yep. So they're still still out there kicking. Yeah, I mean, all the rings are there. I think the dwarven rings have basically been lost. All the rings given to men are up to are all with their ring wrecks. Ring wrecks. <laughs> ring wrecks. <laughs> ring wrecks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the three, and then, yeah, the three um, elven rings are with the elves. Yep. yep. And Gandalf. Um, man, but speaking of dwarves, man. <laughs> the good thing about this list is it's, not really gonna change like it might change a tiny <laughs> teeny bit but not yeah really. yeah well we're just gonna add dwarves <laughs> now we're just gonna change the ranking of the dwarves based on what feats they accomplish in the film oh, right. until until the one and only shows up and then he's gonna be number one forever really i don't know about that 
Wolves. All right, so we are going to rank the dwarves in all twelve of them, right? All thirteen 12. of them. No, because I thought the company was fourteen. Thirteen with Bilbo and fourteen with Gandalf. No, because it's twelve dwarves and then Thor, uh, Thorin shows up. And then Thorin. Okay. Yep. So it's, four, yep. it's thirteen. Can so, we all agree? Can we all agree that Thorin is number one? He kind of wins by default because all the other ones are kind of. I mean, the bald one's pretty cool. I oh like yeah, the bald one. My favorite What's his too. name? Um, bald one. Wallen. Yeah, it's it's Dwalin and Balin. Yeah, Balin and Dwalin. Well, I think Balin's the old man. Yeah, Balin is the old man, then Dwalin, yeah. Ish. The young ones. Yeah, let's talk about these dwarves, I, dude. They're dude, so all over the place. I like Killy, all right? Killy's the only cool guy there. Which one's Killy? Is he the young guy? Yeah, he's Killy's... the one human. <laughs> the one that doesn't look like a dwarf. <laughs> exactly. The one I, 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 love. I really hate that. I really <laughs> hate that he doesn't have a beard. It's like, bro, you're literally part of the long beards. Like, get your act together, dude. Like, you should be like, you sit in the room until your beard grows in. That's how I've, uh, <laughs> I've seen female dwarves with longer beards than you. I know. And then, then they show his brother, and his brother's got a solid beard. So it's like, what's going on, dude? Who are you? <laughs> oh, man. I, I love him just because it's like, it's the spoilers. It's the only way that he would, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, try to get an elvish woman to like him, you know? So that's Which what again, it takes. We'll, just we'll cut your beard. We'll get into that. Yeah, right. that's uh, um, the equi- that's the equivalent of a um, a male dwarven supermodel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Plus, I-, I don't know. I like him because he's like he's got an even like he's just got an even head on his shoulders. Uh, Thorin, he's all angry. over the place. He's all over. He's just the place. angry, man. No, he's, angry dude. he's not always angry. Some he's like, no, dude, I hate you. I love you. I hate you. No, no, you're the worst. No. And you know what? You know, you're no. you're okay. You're okay. No. It's like no. What do you? No. He's angry until the end when Bilbo oh, sees no. it. Oh, wrong. Yeah, that's the only okay. time. Now, for now, as we get you... through this trilogy, he becomes we'll so annoying. I cannot stand him. <laughs> Honestly, in the books, he is kind of all over the place. But it's like, dude, he's been through a lot, bro. He saw his grandfather beheaded. Sure. He saw his town completely obliterated. His dad got tortured to death. He thought his 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 rival was dead. dead. Mm. Also, not in the books at all, either. Azog the Defender. Azog. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I get that they want to have another antagonist for the first film. I think like, it looks cool. I don't know, dude. He barely looks like an orc, dude. He looks weird. I hate that they make the, the orcs and goblins so CG. Like, if you it's recall... It's albino. Then make, it's, make the makeup white. <laughs> he's, a rare, he's rare, like a white rhino. No, dude, it's, <laughs> it's whack, bro. Because, like, if we recall in The Fellowship, the orc that almost kills Aragorn... And like kills Boromir, like that guy. No that's CG. Uruk. That's Urukai. Yeah, still, <laughs> but no CG, and he You're looks right. freaking dope. He looks yeah. sick. So I don't know why they didn't lean on that. Like literally, make that guy cut his hair off and make him white. Done. You're done. I did your job for you. <laughs> well, that's hours and hours of cosmetic. Yeah. So and instead then hour, of that, hours of CG, of CG of dudes sitting at computers typing their fingers bloody. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't like it. I don't okay, like it. okay, I get it. Because look, the CG, it is beautiful. But I can tell, Matt. I can tell it's CG. And you want, you like want to the, just go there right now? Well, we have, we have to do antagonist, and we have to do CG. And we didn't even rank the dwarves. Yeah, we are not um, halfway are through the dwarves. Let's not let's, do the dwarves. Honestly, yeah. Let's just say <laughs> Thorin's okay. the best. Uh, we'll put like Keely second, okay. and then we'll put Gloin third. We'll put the bald Wall- guy fourth. Wallen. Wallen. All right, we, 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 we can put Dwal in above Gloin, and then we'll put the old guy below Gloin. Uh, as long as Bomber is going last, I'm good. Yeah, that guy's like like Bomber. That yeah. guy's like a freaking knockoff version of Radagast. He's like, <laughs> he's, he's like the, like Radagast is the evolution of Bomber. <laughs> I feel like, luck. I feel like Bomber's thing, his whole thing is like luck. How can you be that good at fighting when you're that fat? Yeah, right? He's just like, I saw you like went back and hit somebody and then goes forward. It's like, dude, no, this is not. This is not like a Disney he's, movie. Yeah, he's, I know, right? 
<laughs> he's the equivalence of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Of, of Jabba. Also, Jabba also, good. shout out to Bofur. Bofur is cool, but he's like. I think I was thinking of B- Bofur, not Bomber. I think B- B- Bofur is the the evo- the evolution Bifur. of Radagast. Oh. You mean Bifur. I don't know. They got too many names. <laughs> There's Bifur and Bofur. Bifur is the one that he's talking to before he's about to leave. Okay. Um, no, no, that's Bofur. No, it's Bifur. Is it? I think the site got it wrong then. Biffer and Bofur. Yeah, no, 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 no. Bofur is the dude with like the big old beard. I mean, that's Biffer. Yeah. That's Biffer. That's Biffer. No. I think that, that picture has it backwards. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, what, one of the two. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. All right. Sweet. Glad we, glad we had that discussion. <laughs> um, and we are going to get into ranking the hobbits, but for now, of course, it's just one hobbit, so... And he's yeah. solid. He's, he's likable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bilbo's great. Oh. Martin Freeman's awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah, he does a good job. Kills it. Yep. Yep. Very Hobbit-like. Yes. Yeah, maybe we could rank Gollum as a Hobbit. He goes below Bilbo. <laughs> no, he's not a Hobbit anymore. Oh, spe- he, I don't. I don't even think he was technically a straight-up oh, Hobbit. He was a River Hobbit. Mm-hmm. They say that River Hobbit. Yeah, a River, river. Hobbit. He's got uh, fuzzy feet. That's the matter, processes. <laughs> Uh, before before we move on from the ho- uh, from the dwarves, another magical fact. Magical fact. Gloin, one of the uh, is one of Gimli's the... daddy. Yes, is the father of Gimli, the character. Oh, Gimli, yeah. Gimli's alive, and he's hanging out in their hometown. The same axe is wielded by both dwarves as well. Oh, nice! That's cool. Oh, sweet. Technically, Gloin is at Rivendell when Gimli's at Rivendell in the Fellowship. Really. Yeah, he's there. Because huh. there's like three or four yeah. dwarves sitting there, and his daddy's there. Oh. Yeah, Gloin is. I like Gloin. He's my favorite, just because he's related to Gimli. You, do, you th- do you think he was ever like made fun of at school, like Gloin the groin <laughs> or anything? I don't, I don't think dwarves, dwarves go to school. school. Yeah, It's like, oh, you're <laughs> born? Go hit this rock. <laughs> you'll, you'll both learn how to fight and mine at the same time. Grow a beard. <laughs> And don't come back until your beard's grown. <laughs> oh, man. Freaking Keely, dude. That guy sucks. <laughs> oh, I love it. We should get the girls' takes on the dwarves. <laughs> like, their favorite dwarf. I bet they'll all say Keely. We'll see. I know that you think he's even, even-headed, Winston, but he's kind of stupid. All like, dwarves are stupid. Anything. Nah, Thorin... No, the old guy isn't stupid. That's true. Ballin is is it his yeah. name? Ballin? It's so yeah, Ballin. Ballin. Yeah. Ballin, he's Ballin. Like he's <laughs> honestly one of my favorite. Yeah, he's legit. And he's cool in the books too. He's like Thorin's right hand man. He's cool. I like I like uh Thror. I like that name. Just Thror. Yeah. Is Thror That's his dope. dad or his grandfather? His grandfather. It's Thror. And Thrain is his dad? Is yeah, it Thrain? I think so. I got good names, bro. Yeah, I right. Good names. It's cool. Cool names. Uh, now let's rank the villains. I think we have two yeah, villains so in this, right? Do we? We have Azog the Defiler. And then the... And uh, the Goblin King. The Goblin King. And, I mean, we could technically could throw Gollum in there. No, Gollum's Sauron not a villain yet. There. It's not a villain yet. I mean, he actively tries to kill Bilbo. True, but we're going to rank him in another movie. The trolls. The trolls are villains. Oh, the trolls, yeah. Oh, dude, that scene was too long too. It's like oh. eight hours long, dude. <laughs> I didn't remember that that happened in this movie. I thought it was next movie oh, that yeah. that happened. No, it's this movie. That That's why I was like, right I was right. halfway through this movie, like, what? What else is in these movies? Like, everything <laughs> I, I remember is from this one. Everything in the kitchen sink is in this movie. And then <laughs> after that, it's smog escape. Smog. Yeah, yeah smog, smog es- escapes and destroys the town. End. Like no, what? What? What does that third movie Mirkwood. have in it? No, no, no. The th- the second movie ends with Smaug leaving. Oh my! The, the mountain. Oh. So there's all Mirkwood, dude. Mirkwood is a, a large section. There's Mirkwood, and then there's um, Bilbo in the mountain by himself. Yeah, that's basically all the second movie. Uh. There's all that when they get captured by the elves is in the second movie. There's a lot, and then I think they start talking about some of the Dale people. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I think that they bring up Chip as well. Chip and Dale? 
Yeah, Rescue Rangers. <laughs> All right, let's 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 rank the villains. <laughs> All right, so I think it's 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 uh, not Dale, it's Lake Town. Lake Town. It was the Kingdom of Dale, which is destroyed, and it, all that remains is Lake Town. Like get the names right. Like it don't matters, call. It don't matters. call. Don't call. Don't call. Uh, <laughs> don't um, call Bofer Bofen. All right, <laughs> Bifer. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not Biffer. I think it's Bifer. <laughs> Bofer and Bifer. All right, let's let's rank the villains, guys. Like Bifer. I mean, I guess it's Azog because yeah. he yeah. does something. Yeah. He murders a dwarf. Yeah, and then the Goblin King. Honestly, honestly, the villains suck in this one. I don't like Azog because he's not in the book. Is he dead? What do you mean is he dead? Or does he come back in, like later in the trilogy? Yeah, he comes back, bro. Does he? Okay. Yeah, dude. He killed. All right, we'll get to it. He I forgot, back. dude. I don't remember how. Although this I will say, it's pretty metal that he has like what is it like a trident stuck through his arm yeah like, that's right metal. it's all the way and through also, his elbow it's dope yeah it's it's kind of metal i mean the, <laughs> like imagine if it was a non-cg guy and they just made that prosthetic that if they so just stabbed legit. him with it you know if they just dope. like cut his arm off and gave him a pike <laughs> i would win an oscar get, then and there. get somebody who's missing an arm there you go honestly i'm okay with really it. buff and tall they're out there Oh yeah, you know who who does the the mocap for that guy, for that um, evil orc, Andy Circus. Now it is the actor that does Deathstroke in the Arrow show. I am looking at that now. Holy crap! Yeah, I did I not actually like that. Him. Yeah, that's dope. Throw that guy in some freaking, give him some platform shoes, give him some white makeup and some ugly face. Love it, dude. And some ugly face. Ugly face. Well, I mean, he's a oh, he's an orc. It's got to be ugly. Okay. Uh, the Goblin King's stupid. The Goblin King is like useless. Oh yeah. Like I, it makes no sense how the goblins didn't kill all those dwarves. It literally makes no sense. And I also kind of hate that whole sequence because of how CG it is. But when Gandalf shows up, it's pretty dope. Nah, even then, dude. Just, I, I'm not into it. I'm not into super it. Super cool. It's so CG, and they try to give it cool the CG. miniature look. Because they had a bunch of miniature stuff in the Lord of the Rings, but it's not the same, dude. It's not the same. <clears throat> another, well, I don't another... want... <laughs> Azog. It's Azog. He's at the top. Uh, what were you going to say, Eric, before I continue? Oh, I was, I was just going to say that I don't like, like, yeah, the Goblin King just dies like nothing. Yeah, and he, like, he's, it's like that in the book, like, too. He's like a nobody. Like they were getting ready to do something, and then you, he actually sees the swords, and then he freaks out, and then all of a sudden he's back, and he's not freaked out anymore, and he's like, "Oh yeah, what you gonna do, wizard?" And then I'm gonna slice you with the swords that you were afraid of, and then I'm gonna kill you with them. <laughs> like, and he's like, "Oh, I guess yeah, swords are sharp. I forgot." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He's uh, the worst. I love the voice I'm, actor's good. Uh, uh, character sucks. Magical fact for you. Magical fact! Since you were talking about miniatures and everything. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the scale illusion was accomplished by placing hobbit or dwarf actors and actresses further away from the camera than Sir Ian McKellen. But uh, still live on the same set. This time, however, the illusion had to be accomplished by having the other actors and actresses on a completely different set while McKellen performed his part all alone on a green screen set, with only an earpiece connecting him to the performance being provided by the rest of the cast. McKellen ended up feeling lonely and frustrated. To cheer him up, the cast and crew snuck into the, into the tent in which, he was stay, uh, in which he stayed during daybreaks and decorated it with mementos from the Lord of the Rings films. Uh, mainly old pro props and tapestries from Rivendell and Loth Lothlorien. Lothlorien, Lothlorien, as well as fresh fruit and flowers. Oh, yeah, I felt I nice. I've about this. I've heard about this story, and it breaks my heart. Like he's in like he's in tears, like through this stuff, and like breaking down, like mentally. And I'm like, oh man, that sucks. That really yeah, sucks. Yeah, because yeah, he loves the character. He loves the universe. It sucks to not be able to experience it with people. Kills it. Uh, another. Uh, fact about uh azog thorin's uh thorin's father thrain went missing during the battle of azan 
as on al bu as on ul bizar against azog's army but was never confirmed dead and azog mentions having encountered him in the books following the battle thrain continued to live with his people but went missing during an attempt to reclaim erebor 46 years later which was almost 100 years before the start of the Ho- of the hobbit gandalf found thrain 5 years later in dol guldur where he had been captured tortured and driven mad these events were referred referred to in uh, the desolation of smog yeah i was going to say they they hit they touch on yeah, that don't they show like a dwarf body somewhere yeah, yeah. no they they actually show him i don't know oh, if really? it was yeah, I think it might have been the extended cut. Oh, okay. Hmm. But I do remember him actually going there and finding him. Oh, wow. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll see it. it. Well, we'll see. Yeah. If if it's the extended, it's not going to be on the BO Max. No. They have, it's weird because they have the extended of Lord of the Rings, but not of the Hobbit. It's like they know that we don't care as much. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, true. well, yeah, we're going to do a, a podcast on all the movies, so I guess we need well, them. One of these trilogies is groundbreaking, and then the other one, no. Nah. Is breaking. <laughs> is breaking. <laughs> is ground. Breaking. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, let's bring CGI. Obviously, still one, I mean, but let's talk about it. It's number one, but I mean, I've already complained. The whole Goblin sequence, I think, is trash. All, basically, everything inside Erebor is just so CG. Um, there was a, just so much CG. There was one really Gollum weird... Yeah, Gollum does look good. But there was some one really weird scene where uh, the, they were like attacking the trolls and everything, and there's like hobbits attacking and everything. And the hobbits... At- or, sorry, the dwarves attacking... Um, and the dwarves looked weird, like the animation looked really weird, but the trolls' full CG models looked good. So it's like weird that, you know, yeah. a real life actor animated looked strange, but the yeah. real life CG, like, well, yeah, CG. Dude, I mean, it's hard to take something that's in motion and put it in a scene that they're not actually in, mm. especially when it's that dynamic. And yeah, I think you're totally right. Like, any, almost everything in still frame. It's beautiful but it's just you know it's like you just can tell it's cg and it just takes just takes that little bit away and it just uh it brings it down i mean i hate cg fest stuff and it's it happens yeah it's still like it's where they like it brings to mind i've been watching the ilm like making of things like how they became ilm and everything on disney plus and they just touched on the Jurassic Park one when they're finally starting to digitize everything. And um, they said that when Spielberg said that they wanted the T-Rex to run, it was like mainly these two guys. And one guy was on the movement for the run for six months before he actually nailed it down. So yeah. it's like still, we're you're still not going to get perfect results. Yeah, because... Yeah, so, yeah, there's some things where it's like no matter how much work you put into it, no matter how much oh. resources, it's like if it doesn't fit the scene, it's, it's never going to look perfect. Yeah. Yep. It's going to look wonky. <laughs> I, I think the wargs look terrible too. Like I don't think there's a single more moment, the wolf monsters, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. where the wargs look great. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a shame. Because wargs are sweet. They're pretty cool. Right? They're big old wolf-like things. Of course they're cool. I, I Was it just me, or did the pacing feel really weird, too? It's just so long, you know? Yeah. So it's just so much like, oh, crazy thing, okay. Crazy yeah. thing, okay. Crazy thing, okay. So then when you get to the end, it's like, okay, we've had like three crazy things. So this last crazy thing is like, all right, let's just, just get yeah. this going, yeah, man. Come on. Let's <laughs> get this show on the road. Uh... What do we think of the songs? There's two songs, right? I'll let you guys take care of this, dude. I'm, as you guys know, I hate musicals. And it's one of the things that I'm not a huge fan. I don't hate it in this film because it's, it's okay. It's touching, but I just don't care. So go <sighs> knock yourselves I, out. I don't know. That first song, I did not like. It's like they're just throwing plates and everything. And they're like, ah! I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, thought it, I thought it was funny. 
um, kind of out of place, but um, it's in so, the books. It's completely in the books. Like that entire scene is almost like shot, like word for word in the book. Um, but the the dwar- when the dwarves are all singing is just magic for me. I even have that. I even have that song on my Spotify. So, um, I really like that. Easy cap. Easy cap. Like easy win. Oh, okay. Okay, I was like, yeah, we're, we're, we're too old. old. <laughs> What's that? I thought you were on TikTok. What happened? I'm on TikTok. I'm on old man TikTok. What do you think this is? You think I'm yeah. hip just because I'm on the ticky talk? <laughs> it's like when you capture the flag. So easy cap. Easy win. Oh, okay. Got you guys. I thought you were calling me Captain America. I was yeah. like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> oh. I talk about She Hulk. I need to watch She Hulk. Did you guys watch that today? I need to finish. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? Miss Marvel. Marvel. Anyway, anyway Lord, of the Rings. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So I yeah, it's it's a clear. Uh, the what is that second song? The one where they're lonely talk- mountain. Is it the lonely mountain? I don't um, know. I think it's called the Misty Mountains. The Misty Mountain. That's it. That song obviously goes first, and then the other weird dish dish song, second. <laughs> Plateware, dinnerware related singing. <laughs> Who would have guessed? That's what Bilbo Baggins hates. Uh, man. Uh, By the way, do you guys just have enough food for like a party of four? No, <laughs> dude, you it, come to my it, house. It's like it makes sense because we've seen how much hobbits can eat. That's true. In the other know, movie, fourteen people. I believe it. And dwarves, like they were, like, s- like, especially like the big fat one. He was eating things left and right. There was a lot of food wasted too. What about breakfasts and second breakfasts and afternoon tea? <laughs> no, see, they're, they're no. If they're anything like Merry and Pippin, yeah, he's eating all the time. Yeah. I guess. Although, so. although his portions that we see him eating is regular portions, so I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, God. It is time to guess the Rotten Tomato score. <laughs> it's the prices. I mean, the Rotten Tomato score is right! 77. Oh. Could be higher, but it's a 77. That's a really good guess. It's good and it's enjoyable, but it's just too freaking long. <laughs> I'm gonna go 79. Ooh, I'm gonna go lower. I'm gonna go 75. Second. It is. It's gonna be like 82. 64. Oh my wow. god! Oh. Critics did not like this movie. Wow. I don't know why. It's very enjoyable. It's yes. entertaining. Yeah, it's, it's, well, like it's mostly movie. well acted. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that is really crazy. It's it's because that's like an above average score, and it's like well above average in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like it's cool, man. It's cool. Epic fantasy. It's cool. It's cool. What's your shirt, Eric? Is that Steve Harrington? Of course not. It's Han Solo. Steve Harrington. So you're the original Steve Harrington. If you just see the top of his head, that looks like Steve Harrington. Like, yeah, that's right. Uh, you, you know, it wouldn't be. I do like Steve, but it's not about Steve anymore. I'll, 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 I'll stop there because when are you done? I don't, I don't know. Uh, oh no! Don't tell me you're a Munson guy now. Of course, I you love are. It, man. I don't get why everybody Dude. loves him oh. so stinking much. Like, I like him. He's fine. He's got a great he's... arc. But it's like, really? He's like, I don't understand why people are so in love with him. It's crazy. I mean, you watch that shot on top. Oh, that's of, great. Yeah, All right. Uh, do we, do Winston, thoughts, thoughts on uh, the little tiki's we got from The Last of Us? Oh. Yeah, bro. It Some looks really good. I, I, it looks great. It looks really good. I'm still not sold on the girl I'm who's sold. playing Ellie. She just she looks weird. But other than that, if the dynamic is there, yeah, 
and Sweet. it is, dude. Oh, bro, I don't, I, I, I don't know why I was like, eh, we'll see if it's good. Like Pedro Pascal does not miss, bro. Yeah, the dude does not miss. He's amazing. And like, we literally get one line, and it's like, yep. Oscar, please, yeah, give it to him. honestly, honestly. And then Are just those waiting, those <laughs> waiting for the soundtrack, dude. I cannot oh, be so wait great. for that soundtrack, dude. Legit to hit every time. They just have to make the game. Like, literally, don't change anything. Yep. Because yep. it's gonna be perfect if you do that. Yep. It it wouldn't it wouldn't be uh, <laughs> isn't it if we didn't deter and talk about something else. Exactly. So, exactly. Well, back we're back on track with some magical facts. <laughs> magical facts. Aiden Turner or Killy is the only dwarf actor sporting his real facial hair. The other twelve all have fake beards or have other kinds of fake facial hair. That's why he and it gets shows. the ladies. And that's why he sucks. <laughs> uh, another kind of sad one. Uh, Sir Peter Jackson claims that when he called Sir Christopher Lee to invite him to the premiere of The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey, Lee responded intimidating, intimidatingly, am I still in the movie? Lee had originally been slated to appear in The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, but his scenes were cut from the theatrical release, which caused the actor and director to have a brief falling out. The scenes were restored in the extended edition, though. Damn, dude, that guy is hardcore, bro. Oh, yeah. Like, lo Low-key, <laughs> that guy's James Bond. Yeah. Like, I'm not even joking. Not, not even low. Yeah, like, straight up, he is James we'll, Bond. We'll get into it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of magical facts once we get into the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that dude is Dude, that's uh, one legend. That I got. He's a I legend. Got I got R.I.P. Um, yeah, dude. Well, what, what, uh, this is one that Nate wanted to put in. What best performance should we do, huh? I mean, okay, so, I mean, I think it's between like Gandalf and Smeagol. Mm. Right? Because mm -hmm. Thorin does good, but it's not enough. But I feel like yeah. when we get, like, if we get, we get, I don't know, I guess you could make the argument that we get Gollum later, but like what later in The Lord of the Rings, like, he kind of steals the show for that part of the Return of the King, you know? And I don't want him on the list twice, you know? No, no, we're, he, he's just going to get bumped up. You get, you're, in, you're, you're only in the list once. Okay. So it's like if one of these characters gets a better performance, then they're just going to go higher. We're not okay. going to put him in twice. Um, Bilbo like, does good work, but... Not as good as Gandalf. Yeah, he's just not given enough. I, you're um, right. I totally love that scene between him and Galadriel. It really it's awesome it's it's even more than that dude like when he first shows up it's great yeah. it's I, awesome. but if you think about that he just showed up to some random random hobby like i think I it's not this. a random well, i think i remember this random. guy when he was a kid <laughs> like that's no, it he he remembered the guy as a kid like he saw bilbo as a kid and, and that's like, it yeah, that guy that guy's adventurous <laughs> i'll keep him in mind um, lo, i'm not gonna lie low key low key gandalf no can tell the future like low key i'm not joking so that's part of the reason I'm sure why he's like, I'm gonna need that Bilbo guy. A wizard is never late. Um, so do we give it to Gandalf or do we give it to Smeagol? Because he freaking Smeagol kills it, dude. Gollum he kills it, bro. He so does. it's so great to see Gollum in his element, mm -hmm. you know, not being a little dweeb like he is in the Lord of the Rings. Um nah, so. I say let's get let's give it to Gollum. It's Gollum. Yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, Adam Circus. He's just great. Andy. Andy Circus. Randy Circus. <laughs> Rambo Circus. <laughs> Rambo Circus. I love it. Uh, props to you. You'll get our award. <laughs> um, and then Eric wanted to put end song. I don't even remember the end song for this. I don't dude. either. This is gonna be your list, Eric. This will be your thing. You can have it. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away now. By the way, a lot of the lists I'm not even going to make because there's not two. <laughs> No, there's only one. there's only one. There's only one right now. Like the villains, I will make the villains since there's two. Yeah, there's just whack. There's three. Sauron's in there. And then there's the trolls. There's four. No, there's there's two right now. Two ranked. I don't know in this film. Yeah, but we only rank two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the trolls. Is it just the Misty Mountain again? No, I can't. I don't. Uh... I don't think it's called the Misty Mountain. I think it's the Lonely Mountain. Lonely Mountain, Misty Mountain, some mountain. 
Because I think it's Misty Mountains. Called, are... It's called Misty Mountains. God dang it. Fine. You win. Hey, I'm, we can't hear it, but. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, out of focus. <laughs> yeah. <Dilbo. laughs> out of focus. <laughs> Misty Mountains. I mean, Confirmation. Give me a... Um. Did it's you find one. the end song? I'm still looking. Okay. Let's let's move on for right okay. now. Okay. Or we can just you should, skip just, you should just open up HBO Max and just like listen. To it. <clears throat> um, character design is the next one. Okay, so here, yeah, we got some good stuff. Freaking Thor, Thorin with the freaking wood, and the freaking dude, freaking. It looks cool. dope. How he like carved it into I like love his it, gauntlet. Bro. Dope. He didn't even carve it. He just like rips it out in the original battle. He's just using. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so later on, cool. it's like actually on. Yeah. Like he made it into a piece of armor. It's All right, who else? Cool. Who else do we got? Um, honestly, I think he kind of takes it. Yeah. Because who else is there? And he loses it. He uses. He loses that piece in this movie. I don't think he ever gets it back. And it's like super cool the way he looks. Yeah. So I think uh, he's gonna take it. Thor, grandson of Thor, son of Thrain, oh, son of Thrain, wielder of the oaken shield. There you go. And what's the name of his? Is his Orchrist? He's got the Orchrist sword, which looks cool. I think so. I can't. I can't. I can't remember <laughs> I can't Gandalf's remember. dude. Gandalf's has a cool name too. Gandalf's sword. Let me look it up real quick. Glamdring. It's Glamdring. You're welcome. He just felt my hand start to type, and he was like, yep, that's it. You stop that. You cut that out. It's glam drink. <laughs> uh, best death. So this is going to kind of up to interpretation for us. Uh, it's got to be decaffeination, right? That was sick. It gets wrecked. Okay. Uh, I found the song. Mm -hmm. It's called Song of the Lonely Mountain is what it's. But that's. I called it song that's the end song it how how different is that compared to the misty mountain it's different oh is it yeah it's it's done by an odd like a straight up artist uh, but okay. i don't so my seal that would be sweet <laughs> do the um, seal sound ne <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i had some thoughts I, that i'm not gonna voice neil neil finn cool uh, 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 uh. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, best death. Back on track. Yeah, just three, right? He's the only one that dies. On screen, anyway. I mean, a bunch of goblins die. Yeah, we could do works. the Goblin King. He dies. Yeah, the Goblin Yeah, but Thrain's is way cooler than that. Goblin really? King gets embarrassed. Thrain gets freaking decaffeinated. It's dope. Yeah, and... You get the the slit here, and then the well, no, the slit across the stomach, then the slit here, and then you get the fall. You think that's cooler than Thrain? Yeah. All you see is him pick up the head, and then he throws it. That's pretty legit to me. Um, <laughs> I go, I, I vote for the Goblin King as well. Hey, technically, that that hedgehog died. Right, best death, the Sebastian. hedgehog. Sebastian, the hedgehog. Sebastian, that's right, it was Sebastian. <laughs> Got it. Can't forget it. it. Uh, does anybody else die? <sighs> nah, right? Yeah, that's like it. All right. Yeah. I mean, I think I think we see some dwarves get burnt up. That's kind of cool. All right. If you guys want the Goblin King, Goblin King, don't, don't let don't let me stop you. Oh, no. what about, what, does it count when what the trolls uh, becoming stone? Yeah. Um. That's not that cool though. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's cool. But it's not that cool. Yeah, I know. I like the goblin. I think, I think one of those rock monsters gets decaffeinated as well. There's a lot True. of head, a lot of beheadings in this film. <laughs> hey, a dude, lot. that's it's it's a staple of Lord of the Rings like lore at this point. Dude, they go too far. I love this it. one. It's too many beheadings. Love it. They lose like when you they go... lose weight. They lose weight when you do it too many times. <laughs> uh, true. Uh, but I love going around in uh, Shadow of Mordor just. <sighs> Decaffeinated people when, left and right. When Winston, Winston actually carries his heads with him, <laughs> like in a satchel. He uh, he pickles <laughs> them like Jack Sparrow's brother from the Rolling Stones. What? It's like some some people actually think he's the Santa of uh, Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
round. That's with the time to end, boys and girls. <laughs> you get ahead, and you get ahead. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> hey, here, get ahead of your schedule. <laughs> Uh, get okay. ahead of traffic get ahead of traffic um most annoying i think it all i think it clearly goes to uh the one hobbit i forgot his name already what? Uh, the one dwarf sorry oh. dwarf not hobbit uh bomber bomber that super one? annoying yes it's either bomber or uh radagast radagast sorry. radagast oh it's definitely radagast he's just like annoying to look at <laughs> True. True. And he's so like weak. It's like, bro, you're literally an angel sent from the gods, and you're like, free, you're having an anxiety attack right now, bro. Yeah. Like, please, dude. He spent too much time eating mushrooms. Yeah, in the woods. I think Saruman's kind yellow. of up there. Yeah, the Saruman. That's on my nerves. Really? Not as much as Bomber. Yeah. Not not as much as freaking Radagast. Radagast, yeah. Are we, just, like, are we just hating on Bomber because he's like super huge? Like, really, what did he do? I don't know. Like, man, that that dwarf's just way overweight. <laughs> he annoys me so much. <laughs> I mean, diet already. Hey, man, at least he's got a beard. <laughs> it's a real dwarf. Uh, doesn't his facial hair wrap around like a freaking scarf? Some of them, somebody's sure. does. Oh, gosh. All right, who's it going to be? I, I vote for Rat- Radagast. I'm okay with that, sure. Radagast is pretty annoying. Sure. Magical fact about Radagast. Magical fact about Radagast. The ghost <gasps> who attacks Radagast in Dol Guldur is the witch king Angmar, the same who stabs Frodo. No, not Angmar. His name's not Angmar. Uh, no, it's the Witch King of Agmar, Angmar. Angmar. Of Angmar. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, that was me. Sorry, that was not bad. My bad. My bad. God, don't give me that look. The same who... His name's Chuck. <laughs> this, the same who His stabs Frodo the on the Weathertop. On Weathertop, I'm sorry, in the Fellowship of the Ring. The necromancer spotted is by Radagast yeah. is the first sign of Sauron's remanifestation yeah. in Middle-earth. That, guy, that guy's got too many Morgul blades, dude. He's just giving them out like candy. Like you get a Morgul blade, and you get a Morgul blade. Yep, yep, yep. Who just gives out candy? <laughs> Pedophiles. Wow. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> that got dark. You and asked. we were talking about beheadings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the movie, Elrond uh, mentions the previous four hundred years of watchful peace See? during the White, uh, the White Council. That's why Saruman's like, Sauron's dead. It's been 400 years. That dude got freaking defingered. He's gone. <laughs> defingered. As Gandalf voices his recent suspicions about Sauron's return to uh, his stronghold at Dol, Dol Guldur in the Lord of the Rings uh, appendix, appendices? appendices, appendices, it is clear just... that the council has long known about this. 900 years before the start of the, of the Hobbit novel, Gandalf already drove Sauron away from Dol Guldur, which started the period called the Watchful Peace that ended 400 years later when Sauron returned there again. The White Council was apparently unaware of this until 90 years prior to the start of the book. Gandalf actually urged the White Council to move against Dol Guldur, but Saruman decided against it, stating that Sauron was not yet powerful enough to warrant such a dangerous intervention. The movie significantly condenses and simplifies this backstory, omitting the first White Council and having the watchful peace end around the start of the movie. Who, who does that? Like, oh, no, he's for Saruman. Just let him get, you know, up <laughs> there. So strong enough. Enough. Real battle. <laughs> for Saruman, I think it's more of the like, no, I'm in charge. Okay. You shut up, Gandalf. I'm in charge here. Yeah. Okay. I think that's I'm literally the white, the gray. his whole character. Yep, yep. That is crazy, though. Like, think about that. Gandalf alone sent Sauron back. Let me break this down for you, buddy. All right. So there's like there's three tiers of celestial beings. Oh, I know. Lord oh, I know. Please Good. tell it. Please go for there's, it. There's Big Daddy. Uh, uh, I think it's Alu Aluvatar, something like that. He's he's like God. He makes everything. Then there's the Valar, which are kind of like 
your Greek gods. They're like lesser gods, but they're still up there. You you don't really see them. And then underneath them, there's the Maiar, which are like angels. Gandalf, Saruman, Radagast, the blue uh, the blue wizards, and Sauron are all in this in this tier, tier of celestial beings. So I mean, if you think about it, a weakened because Sauron is like basically the best of the angels and he's evil but he's still in that tier so a weakened sauron it makes it tracks it tracks that gandalf could like hey get the heck out of here but it it just it's something that frustrates me with the whole series that when i found that out i was like why doesn't gandalf like do more take the fight to Sauron? like he is so powerful and he just he doesn't really show it most of the time you know it's it's a couple things. Um, one, he's not as powerful as you think. He is powerful. He's more powerful than basically anybody else. Like, but there are elves out there that are more powerful than Gandalf. Well, I think there's, you know, there's um, arguments to be made that Galadriel is stronger than him. Yeah. And there's other ones. And then two, every age, the gods have less and less influence, and they're trying to give the control of the world to um men and elves and you know everybody else that's alive so in the in the first age like the gods are just going nuts dude like the the valar the guys above gandalf and and sauron they're just freaking throwing hands it's crazy in the second age the valar are basically gone and they're kind of just doing a thing there a thing here it's mostly the elves and some men and then in the third age, they're like, all right, the Valar are basically non-existent. Like the only time the Valar are, are, are involved are like the eagles, because the eagles are like straight up minions of like the head good god. And then other than that, it's just like Gandalf and Sauron and Saruman. And even they aren't, if they're good, like Gandalf, they're not trying. One, they can't. Like Gandalf can't go one-on-one -on -one against Sauron. No, even yeah. in the Lord, Lord of the Rings, like he'll lose. Mm-hmm. And he can't even go one on one. I mean, I mean, we'll see it in the future against some of his minions. So he is powerful, but he's not that powerful. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I get it. But also, that's another thing that I thought of. Like, all right, I've heard explanations over and over of why the eagles didn't take Frodo just straight up to the mountain. But like in this situation, like they totally could have. No, I mean it's the same thing where it's like. Those eagles are direct subordinates to one of the gods. I think his name is Manway. And like he, like I said, the gods are not getting involved at this point. They're just like, they're, they're basically their job is, hey, we, we helped in the past. We gave you Gandalf and the other wizards. The rest is on you. But they, and the they, only time the eagles show up is when Gandalf calls them. Yeah. The only time they do that. But still, like Gandalf calls them and they take, they fly on the eagles of, very far very far away you know why not just go like they can see the mountain just take it to the mountain like if i feel like then that's putting the eagles in danger of smog possibly it's not only that it's like i'm saying the gods don't want to get involved you know they don't they don't want to baby humanity and the elves and the dwarves they want them to take care of the world themselves because eventually they want to just leave entirely and humanity and the elves just take over completely unassisted, ultimately humanity. So they're, like I'm saying, they're just trying to get away. They're trying to not interfere any more than they have to. So that, that is the ultimate reason. Because, yeah, what would have happened is, you know, Gandalf or the dwarves have been, hey, take us to Erebor. And in the books... Those eagles, specifically their leader, is completely sentient. He can talk, oh, he can think, okay. he's completely sentient. And they don't ask, but if they did, he'd be like, no, nah, I'm not your pet. I have my boss, and my boss told me not to do that. That would be overtime. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Triple tea. time. Uh, Us eagles are not allowed overtime. <laughs> Let's rank the action sequence. Yeah, what should we doing? I think, man, just the, I mean, it's the last one, the, the one it's versus the goblins. Oh, okay. And the last one is the one where they fighting Azog. Yeah. Then there's the goblins. Yeah. Then there's the trolls. Mm, trolls isn't that good. 
No. I think it's either then, between the goblins or Azog. But I mean, the flashback one slaps, bro. That's, That's pretty good. The flashback where Thrain really gets beheaded, it slaps. It's just you don't think about it. Think about it because it's at the beginning of the movie, you know, or close-ish to the beginning. And like it's the last not- one is okay. But uh, they're mostly I, just in the trees. Yeah, yeah, throwing exactly. acorns. And then again, the freaking goblins is such a CG mess that I'm just not into it. Yeah, it's like a no-win situation, honestly. So I think uh, we're going uh, flashback. flashback, flashback, flashback. Okay, yeah, because we get flashback. him doing the oaken shield thing. It's freaking sick. Flashback. Thor gets beheaded. Thor. Uh, another magical fact for you. Another magical fact for you. <laughs> uh, when Bomber caught the egg thrown into his mouth on the first take, uh, sorry, that happened on the first take, but he was unable to catch it on on subsequent takes. Therefore, the take used was the first one. Nice. Also, so that reaction was yep. probably like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, also, Bomber only says one line during the entire movie. He's dopey <laughs> from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... <clears throat> don't talk. Yeah. To be honest, there's a lot of dwarves that do next to nothing in the books. Like, I don't know why he has so many. I. Uh... And one more before we actually rank the movie. The first roar we hear from Smog in the first scene of Smog's attack on Erebor is actually a sound bit from the special effects director's seven-year-old daughter roaring. It was manipulated and then corrected to sound like a dragon. It was put into the movie. They gave her that gas that makes your voice really deep. Oh, yeah. And then they just like, all right, roar. Uh, <laughs> that uh, definitely wasn't. Was I guess it. they hadn't, uh, hadn't cast... Benedict Cumberbund yet. Damn, a big Cumberbund. So where Dominic do we put? Cumberbund. It is time to Bund. rank the uh, <laughs> the Hobbit: An Unexpected Journey. Where are we ranking it, gentlemen? Number one. Would, number one. Yeah. yeah, I think we're gonna have to make different lists for this one though. Good spot for it. Just squeaks in at number one. Can we call Benedict Cumberbunds? Y- y- you want to call him? No, I, I mean from now on. Oh. <laughs> I'm, his I name is like Dominic Benedict. Cumberbund. Oh, I like Benedict Cumberbunds. Yeah, but Benedict is <laughs> an actual. We, and when we say it, can we use the like oh. Cumberbund? Cumberbund? <laughs> no. Oh, I hate. Like, I hate how the fingers go together. Dominic. <laughs> Dominic Cumberbund. <laughs> like Dominic Cumberbund. <laughs> I like that better also, instead of this. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of butts, did you guys watch the the House of the Dragon? I did. Yes. Thoughts, thoughts, Winston. It's fine. Eh, I know it's. I, it's I don't like Matt Smith's character. He looks stupid. Uh, who's that? It's Damon. Oh yeah, yeah. He looks weird. He looks really weird. It's the wig. Something's yeah. Weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last magical fact for this episode. In the original book by T. R. R. Tolkien and T. R. R. Tolkien. K- <laughs> It is like too late. Diggs. It has been a very long day. I'm sorry. Like Tay Diggs. J.R.R. J. Tolkien. <laughs> and in the animated movie, Smog attacks Erebor, the Lonely Mountain, at night. While the, movie op- while the movie's opening narration by Bilbo and the song sung at home says the same thing, it is clearly daytime in the opening prologue of this movie when Smog attacks Erebor and the nearby town of Dale. Little inconsistency for you. They want you to be able to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and who flies kites at night? I mean, we had to see those kites. <laughs> very important. Very, very important. Almost like they're summoning smoke with their dragon kites. Well, like trapping them like that fish in a lake. Was our revisitation for the introduction of Too this long. trilogy of the Hobbit? I built a whole computer during this film. It's too long. Yeah, it is. It is long. And uh, the, the length of the movies is still waiting for us. Eric, what is the next movie that we are going to be watching? What's the next very long movie? The next long movie we will be watching will be The Hobbit, 
the desolation of Smog! Come now, don't be shy. Step into the light. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. Did, that, did any of that cut out? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was perfect. Yeah, but like, this, is, this is an, another thing, Winston. Like, the whole point of Gandalf, do, like, making, like, helping the dwarves to do this and getting Bilbo is because, like, he knows that once Sauron is strong enough, he's probably going to be able to bribe Smaug into mm. helping him. Mm. And Smaug showing up is, like, game over. Oh, yeah. For, like, anybody. Yep. So he's yeah. like, we got to find out a way to deal with him. Yep. Two. Who's going to win on a 1v1 between Gandalf and Smaug? Smaug. Exactly. Smaug's an OG, bro. Why do, you think, think, why do you think he's bringing all the dwarves with him? I know. It's like a, <laughs> Here, know. take this one first. Right. He's so what you guys want to do? You guys really want your treasure back, right? <laughs> well, I have this key that I've been keeping for a while now. And you a can, map. You can travel along with me. Now, if five but is wait. enough. There's no, no, more. Ten isn't enough. Oh, Thirteen. Yeah, Got room that, that, for a burglar. According to my calculations, thirteen of you will die. So exactly. perfect. I think I just need enough time to throw thirteen dwarves, and that'll be enough time to weaken him, so I can then then kill him, stab that, him. That's why he's so upset all the time. Like when they almost get themselves killed, he's like. I need you for the end game, guys. <laughs> like you almost got eaten by trolls. You got captured by goblins. I mean, get it together. Yeah. <laughs> I need you food for the last guy, all right? You're bait. Do you understand? Bait. Yeah. <laughs> uh well, thank you for watching. If uh if you like this, please hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave a comment. Nate, do you think? If you oh. know anybody whose entire family is known for their luscious beard. And one of them... Your mother as well. Yeah. And one of them doesn't because he's a hipster punk. Let him yeah. know. <laughs> punk. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think plenty of people have uh, families where it's like, yeah, intense facial hair is a thing. Or they know a family that's like that. There's always that one dude who's like, why is he clean shaven? Like he looks stupid. In the family pictures, he looks like a bald spot. <laughs> okay, have you know any families like that? If that is your family, watch, watch this podcast. We got great content related to facial hair. It's uh, awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. Just tell them tell to grow up, all right? <laughs> uh, Bye. <laughs> have, a, have a magical night. I don't know. <laughs> Get out of here.